I wanted to spend some time in this module talking with you about science lesson planning um, because the format we use in science is a little bit different for lesson planning than maybe you might see with the North Carolina six point um, lesson plan. So what we use in science is called the 5E learning cycle, the 5E lesson plan you'll also hear it referred to as. Um, and this format is intended to um, encourage inquiry-based science and so that's why we use this format in science education. Um, so to start, the five E's are engage, explore, explain, extend, and evaluate. Um, so by engage, we're referring to getting students excited about the, the lesson. Um, this is also a time when you want to do your pre-assessment to learn what prior knowledge and prior experience they have with the topic so that you can structure your um, instruction around their backgrounds and build on what they already know or what prior experiences they've had with this particular topic. With the explore section, this is a time when students maybe make observations of something, they may plan an investigation. It's really just giving them a time to explore the topic. Um, and with uh, particularly with inquiry, this would be a time when they plan some type of investigation or ask questions. Uh, explain, this is sort of where we traditionally think of getting information from the textbook or a lecture. But with the 5E lesson plan, we want to find um, different ways or more inquiry-based ways to explain the particular topic or the science concept. So this could be uh, implementing some type of investigation and collecting data and trying to construct some type of conclusion from the data that have been collected. Um, this might be an opportunity for the teacher to explain the science concept or maybe read a nonfiction book related to the topic. It's basically helping the students construct their own understanding of the concept or the science topic. And then extension, this is the time for the student to take the information that they've now learned about the concept and apply it in a new way or apply it in a real world setting. Uh, and then the final 5E is evaluate. And so this is your opportunity to do an evaluation of your lesson, um, an assessment of what students have learned about the particular topic. So you want to build in some type of evaluation activity or way to assess the learning objectives to ensure that students have learned uh, the, the concept. So when we're lesson, doing a lesson plan, we want to start with our learning objectives. And so we define this as a statement in specific and measurable terms that describe what the learner will know or be able to do as a result of engaging in a learning activity. So important things to note here, it should be measurable. So to say things like students will understand is very broad or students will learn. It's very broad and it's not necessarily measurable because what does it mean to, to learn or to understand? You want to be very specific about your learning objectives. So instead of saying learn or understand, you might say something like compare and contrast, or the student will be able to define, or the student will be able to list. Um, and these are a little bit more specific so that they can be measured through your evaluation and your assessment. Um, your learning objectives should also be measurable, meaning that you can implement some type of assessment or evaluation activity to ensure that the learning objectives have been met for each of your students. Um, so an example of an objective would be, in science, would be the student will be able to compare and contrast living versus non-living things. So what's the purpose of objectives? Um, why do we need to include these in our lesson plans? Well, we need to do that because setting the objectives helps to ensure that the learner meets the learning criteria. So we don't want to just have a lesson um, that doesn't have some type of objective or outcome. So this will really dictate what we want students to learn as well as how we will structure our instruction to meet those learning objectives. So moving to the second bullet, it really guides our planning and delivery of instruction to ensure um, that students have the science concept that we're trying to teach them. Um, and then the third purpose is it helps us develop and implement appropriate, appropriate formative and summative assessment strategies. So by setting the learning objectives, we're able to develop assessment strategies, both formative and summative, to ensure that those learning objectives have been met. So when you write your learning objectives, again, they should be measured, um, sorry, measurable with your assessment, and they should your assessment should align with your learning objectives. So we're going to have a STEM, a verb, and a learning outcome. So the STEM is typically the student will be able to, and then you insert some type of verb, um, and again, avoid general vague terms such as understand, know, and learn because they're too difficult, they're too broad and very difficult to assess. They're not really possible to measure because they're so broad. 
Um, and then after your verb, you would want some type of learning outcome. And so this would be what should students take away uh, that can be assessed. So our format would be the student will be able to, and then you'll insert some type of verb, and then your learning outcome. So as we mentioned in the previous slide, uh, the student will be able to compare and contrast as our verb. Um, living and non-living things would be our learning outcome. So here are some objective verbs that are a little bit more specific than those vague terms we talked about like know, understand, learn. Uh, you can use these more specific terms to more clearly identify what you want students to take away in a way that, and because they're specific, they'll be measurable rather than those very broad and vague terms that we discussed. So this is just a resource to help you when you're writing your objectives for science. And so now let's take a look at a sample 5e lesson. Uh, and this lesson is actually looking at what is science and what is the nature of science. So if you look in my lesson plan format, the template has a place where you include your name as well as what the topic of the lesson is. Uh, there's a place to include your title. Um, in this case, it's mystery containers. And then there's a place to put your state standard. You can access the state standards through the internet. They are called the North Carolina Central Standards. Um, I've also included these in our Blackboard course site as well. Uh, you'll see that mine's very general for this lesson because I'm really just looking at science as inquiry, which is an overarching goal of the North Carolina science standards for all grades K through 5. But if you were looking at something specific like non-living and living things, then you would want to include the number of that standard as well as the statement, which you'll notice when you um, download the state standards from that website that I included in the Blackboard site. So you'll have to have your state standard and then you want to develop more specific learning objectives from those state standards. So just to clarify, the state standards are not your objectives because they're so broad and they're really, the state standards are really to identify a science unit. They're not really the objectives of a specific one day lesson. So you'll want to unpack that standard uh, to make your learning objectives. So in this particular lesson, I have learning objectives such as the student will be able to define nature of science, the student will be able to list nature of science concepts, the student will be able to explain how scientists work. And so again, you'll see there's that STEM, there's the verb, and then there's the learning outcome. And you can see the verb is very specific rather than those, those words such as know, learn, or understand. It's very specific. I want to see if students are able to provide a definition of nature of science, and so in that way, it's measurable through my assessment and evaluation. Um, I also like to include a section on what learners' misconceptions are about this topic because then I know in general what misconceptions students often have about this topic and I can make sure that I address it in my instruction. So related to what science is, students often have misconceptions about what theories are. Um, there's sort of a belief that theories, if they gain enough evidence, become a law, uh, which in fact they're two very different things. There's also misconceptions about science, such as that science is a collection of facts and that they're complete and unchanging, when in fact the nature of science would say that they're always undergoing change based on new evidence and new data that scientists collect. So these are misconceptions that I know are common for all students and I would want to make sure that I address them in my instruction. And then you see we'll have some type of safety concern. With nearly every science lesson there is going to be some type of safety concern so be sure that you address this in all of your science lessons. Um, and then I make adaptations and accommodations for any of the exceptional students that I have in my class. Uh, and so then I just explain here what accommodations I would make for students uh, in this lesson. And so then this is our template for the 5E format. You'll see again we start with the engage and a reminder that this is where we get students excited about the topic and where we maybe would do a pre-assessment activity. So you'll see I um, chose to read a book titled Dr. Zargul's Book of Earthlets to get students excited about the topic. Um, I ask questions to help students figure out the way that the book mirrors how it's, what it's like to act like a scientist. Um, so I have guiding questions here. What do you think the book is about? In which ways is Dr. Zargul like a scientist? What science skills does he use? So I'm using children's literature to make it relevant to students and to get them excited about the topic, get them excited about wanting to learn what science really is. And then you'll see I also included a pre-assessment activity to get 
at what students' prior knowledge and prior experiences in, of nature of science are so that I can use that to make sure that I uh, meet the needs of all my learners and really gear the instruction toward what their needs are and what their interests are related to nature of science. Um, and then explore. This is where students have an opportunity to get acquainted with a the topic. They maybe will develop some type of investigation or do some type of observation. Um, and so here I have them participating in a mystery container activity. So we sort of look at what an observation is, what it means to do a scientific observation, and I give them time to explore their mystery container and make these observations. Um, they discuss what the difference is between quantitative and qualitative data, and during their explor exploration, they measure and collect quantitative and qualitative data about their mystery container. And then they collaborate with one another to compare and contrast their data to see if they can find another person in class with their mystery container. Uh, and again, we have guiding questions here to help facilitate that um, activity and to help students engage and collaborate with one another. So during the explain section, we would discuss the activity. We would make linkages between how that activity was similar to what a scientist does. Um, I also would refer back to their readings and discuss some of the main points from the literature that they read on nature of science for their homework. Um, and then our extend activity would be to do a card sort activity where they're given nature of science statements and asked to work in collaborative groups to discuss each of the statements and decide whether or not they agree or disagree with each of the statements. So while they're working in groups to discuss each of those statements, they're engaging in discussion and scientific argumentation while also learning more about nature of science. Um, and again, there's those guiding questions, which of these statements do you agree with, which do you disagree with, why? And then we would come back as a whole group and discuss which groups placed what um, nature of science statements in the agree category and which ones they placed in the disagree and then have a um, group debate about whether or not all of them should be in the agree or disagree statement. And then for the evaluation, um, you know, discussion is a perfect way to evaluate to do some type of um, ongoing assessment, so listening to the content of students' discussion throughout all of the activities in the lesson, um, listening to their pre-assessment information when they construct their posters and then what they add or update on their poster as the post-assessment, looking at that as a great way to evaluate what they've learned about this topic, um, listening to the content of their discussions during the card sort, card sort activity, and also what they write in their student reflective journals. And so if you choose to look at discussion as a type of informal evaluation or a type of informal assessment, you want to make sure that you know specifically what you're looking for to ensure that the learning objectives have been met. So I would ask questions such as, are students making valid observations and inferences of the mystery containers? Are they engaging in valid debates with their classmates? Uh, when they're debating, are they using their observations and their data as evidence to support their assertions? Um, are they using the nature of science content from the discussions and readings uh, during their collaboration for the card sort activity? So really have they learned something and are they using that information in their collaboration during the card sort activity? And then with the poster, are they adding new content to the pre and post assessment? Um, are they adding new content on the poster or have they eliminated their or addressed their misconceptions? And so those would be the types of information and things that I would look for with my evaluation to ensure that all of the learning objectives have been met. Um, and so that's really an example of the 5E format. Hopefully as we go through the semester and you see additional uh, lesson plan examples, you'll get more familiar with this. Um, and as you're doing your lesson plans, continue to refer back to the resources in this module to help you as you prepare these 5E lessons.